Welcome back, Bulldogs, for our second series uh, on building resilience. Today we're going to talk about healthy mind and body. Uh, really important in these days where we don't always have our leadership telling us what to do and where to go. Uh, we got to build our own capabilities and, and know what's good for us and what's not. And uh, I know it's really important for me. Yeah, so taking care of yourselves, I mean, soldiers, your, your body is your most valuable weapon system, right? So how do you take care of yourself? And, and that's, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, so the, uh, I think there, there's, well, first off, let's introduce who, who, who's here talking with us. So uh, I guess we'll start over here, sir. I'm Alan Kissack. I'm one of the SUDC providers at 3-1 UDH. And, and what's SUDC? Uh, Substance Use Disorder Clinical Care. Okay. All right, so those that are those are drinking too much or possibly using other substances to augment their lifestyle. Yes, sir. Okay, great. I'm Lieutenant Yarkasko. I'm one of the clinical dietitians. Right now, I'm over at the hospital, but in a couple of months, I'm going to be here. So you've got a while to get your stuff together before I show up. All right, and I'm Lieutenant Campbell. I'm the Third Brigade Physical Therapist. Great. So look, at, and, and I, we all struggle with this, but you know, how much is too much? Can, is there ever too much PT? I don't know. I doubt it. Uh, but uh, you know, how much is too little, and and what is just right, and, and why is it important? So, uh, using that as as a launch for our conversation, I, I like to start off, you know, with so so what's too much alcohol? Well, the medical model would say that. Uh, anything more than five alcoholic beverages in one sitting would be deemed excessive. So if you're within that one to five range, that's excess, that's acceptable. Okay. That's the medical model. And is it, and that's, so I can have four and a half drinks every single day uh, according to the medical model. No, oh, okay. Not, not exactly. So <laughs> if you're, if you're drinking 14 drinks per week, yeah. um, no more than five in one sitting. So, so if you typically, if you were to drink, if you had two alcoholic beverages per evening, that would total 14. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose you could, some people only drink during the weekends. It doesn't mean that you would drink seven and seven on Saturday, a Friday and Saturday, and that would be your 14. But ideally, if you're a social drinker, it would be one to two beverages per, per, per the evening. Okay, so I can't save up, and on Saturday night, well, now I can't go out anyways, but I can't go back to my barracks room or back to my house and, and have 13 drinks in a night, and I'll be okay. Not advisable. Not advisable. Okay, good. So other, other than counting, so because I might run it, you know, if you're talking about more than, more than 10 fingers, right, so what are some things that somebody could, could look for either in themselves or in a battle buddy to say, hey, maybe this, my battle buddy's got problems. Changes in his in your battle buddy's friend uh, behavior. Uh, maybe they're not as accessible. Maybe they seem a bit down. Uh, if now we're not, if you if you're talking to them, uh, they report just feeling a little bit more depressed, um, or they're more irritable. Um, something of that nature. Okay. okay. All right. And so thank thank you. Uh, so that's too much alcohol we're talking about so is there is there is there any such thing as eating too much food absolutely and before i get into that i just kind of want to piggyback off what you were saying the dietary dietary guidelines for americans recommend no more than two drinks a day for males and one drink a day for females and like we were saying you can't save them and drink them all on the weekend it doesn't work like that additionally what one drink is is like a set number so for beer, it's 12 ounces of beer. For wine, it's five ounces. For spirits, it's 1.5, so like what a shot is. So you can't make a Long Island that's got four or five different shots in it and count that as your one drink. Already right there, that's like three, four drinks, depending on what you put in it. But then as far as food in general, you can definitely get too much. It's very dependent on how much physical activity that you're getting. So there's something called the My Plate Method that's a really easy meal planning method that you can use and you can still get all the foods that you really enjoy um, and what it is is half of your plate should be made up of non-starchy vegetables so I like to describe it as things that you would put in a salad so all your green leafy vegetables your carrots cucumbers tomatoes onions 
Now that doesn't mean you have to have a salad every single day. There's lots of different ways to prepare your vegetables so they're so flavorful. You can spice them, bake them, saute them. But typically half of your plate should be made up of those non-starchy vegetables. A quarter of your plate should be made up of some type of starch. So something like quinoa that's got a little bit of bonus protein in it is awesome. Or you can do something like rice, a dinner roll, a piece of bread, any type of starch, pasta, a tortilla, anything like that. The last quarter of your plate should be made up of some type of lean protein. So things like chicken, turkey, fish, or you could go to those plant-based proteins like beans, lentils, tofu, tofu um, tempeh, anything like that. And it's a really good way to kind of plan your meals and avoid overeating like that. Because if you stick to that meal planning method, you're not going to add all of the extra, you know, like sides that you might normally do. So it's a quick and easy thing that you can think about while you're preparing your meals. Most of what you've mentioned, I cannot find at the driver. <laughs> so, so am I getting all that? Sure. So let's take a McDonald's, for example. You go to McDonald's, you get a Big Mac. So where's the bread going to go? It's going to fall into your starch category, right? The patty is going to be the protein. So maybe you take your Big Mac home and have a couple of baby carrots and cucumbers on the side. So you're still building that plate. It just doesn't look like it does in the picture. Or, or, or when I go to the defect, I fill the big section of the to-go plate with vegetables, right? Yeah. Instead of french fries. Absolutely. That, that, sounds like, that sounds like the right way to do it. So it's field craft for health. It's not convert yourself to the, the, the pinnacle of great health. It's, hey, if you're going to go get fast food, here's, here's a couple ways that you can even stay a little bit healthy. Yeah, or even if you're yeah. restricted to like what you can make at home, like if you only have a microwave, you can still get like those cups of ramen noodles and add like a bag of frozen vegetables to it and make like your own kind of ramen. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different ways to sneak vegetables in and I'm not just saying that because it's my job to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, and one, one pitch for the commissary, I'll tell you, you know, when, when people are stocking up and you can't find toilet paper or cleaning supplies anywhere, one, one thing you can find are vegetables and produce because people think that you know, they're not going to buy it because they, they need to stock up on canned goods and the end of the world's coming, but it's not. And, and uh, vegetables are flowing freely and, and they're out there. So yeah, so not bad for, for those that don't live in the barracks and have that access in the, in the dining facility. Just, just to let you know, the commissary's got it and, and most of the grocery stores off post still have plenty of produce out there. The other nice thing about that is even if you do go and maybe you buy a little bit more than you can use right now, if it's like broccoli or carrots or something like that, try freezing it. Just throw it in the freezer if you can't use it so it doesn't go to waste and then you still have a backup if you need it later on. Right. And how about, how about PT? Yes sir, so you can definitely do too much. Um, so some of our biggest injuries are overuse injuries in the Army. And that comes from doing exercise too much, not having an adequate rest. So I like to break it down into endurance and strength. Um, with the endurance, um, we need enough time for our body to be able to recuperate and then prepare. Um, what will happen for a lot of times, if it really depends on where you're at today, and not, oh, I'm gonna start this, so I'm gonna run 20 miles this week because I'm starting this. What did you do last week? And then therefore, what are you doing this week? Um, with running three to four times a week, with about one to two, three days of rest is more than enough. And that way you won't hit on that far side of overtraining because your fitness will actually decline and that's where injuries start to arise. So for all the soldiers that find so much time on their hands and the only time they're really supposed to be going out of the barracks is to work out. So they're doing like two and three a days. What's your, what's your advice for those that, that, that want to get more fit but you know, and, and the the draw is to get out of the barracks room and so they're working out two or three times a day. How, how do they do that safely without uh, hurting themselves? Good question. So breaking it up with the endurance, so if you're going out two to three times a day, um, you can have a nice run um, workout in the morning or in the evening, however you want to split it. And then that second activity um, would be a good time to do strength. So whether it be um, body weight exercises, getting some type of load with your ruck, doing squats, um, mixing and matching and not working the same system too much in that same day. Um, so you don't want to do you know, three miles in the morning and another six miles in the evening. It would be good to do three miles at a certain pace and then add some body weight exercises to that. So we, so we talked about too much. What's too little? 
So too little when it comes to endurance um, really is going to be about three times a week. Any less than that two times a week, you're not going to get enough stimulus to have some gains week by week. Um, when it comes to strength training, if it's only one time a week, um, that's too little. The minimum for strength training is two times a week of sufficient weight or stimulus for you to be able to gain on that. Um, so that sounds, a, that sounds a lot like doing PT five times a week like we normally do when we're working, right? Yes, sir. Major. <laughs> Five times a week and how you work it out, whether, you know, adequate amount of strength and endurance, that's the optimal blend. So I don't know if there's such thing as, well, there is too little food, right? But probably the wrong food. So what are maybe some things that we should avoid, ma'am? So as far as too little food, it really depends on the individual. Um, some of us are stress eaters. Other of us are the opposite. They tend to eat very little when it, you're stressed out. And times like this, people are stressing out about a variety of different things. If that is something that you tend to do, things that you could do are like set reminders on your phone. Um, something I do is like I follow a bunch of like food accounts on Instagram and then you're scrolling and you'll be reminded like, oh, I should probably eat something. <laughs> I, 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 is there any, you know, I, 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 I caution to even ask you, I don't think there's ever any too little alcohol, but what would be uh, for somebody who enjoys a glass of wine or, or something with dinner, you know, what would be an appropriate, okay amount of alcohol to consume? I think the two, if you were gonna, because if, if we're all indoors most of the time, there, I think the two would be, that would give you, uh, that would allow you to ration either a 12, uh, 12 ounce beer, wine, I forget what that is. Five ounces. Five ounces, and then the 1.5 ounce uh, shot of liquor. Yeah. So, um, so, 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 have, so, so having, a, having, a, uh, having a drink with dinner is okay as long as I'm not driving somewhere afterwards. Yeah. It sounds like. Or it's a 40 ounce Long Island iced tea. <laughs> 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 you know, the other thing too is, is the, the concept of harm reduction, because I, I realize that two alcoholic beverages for this demographic, 20 something year olds, is probably not always realistic. I, I, the counter would be your typical college student. Uh, sort of this this particular demographic, they drink a little bit more. Uh, so the concept of harm reduction, uh, maybe imposing a limit on yourself. I'm going to have four or five tonight. Uh, maybe I'll skip three or four days. It's not it's not to be perfect, but I think harm reduction when you're talking about increasing stress, being cognizant, maybe putting a self uh, a self imposed limit on what you're going to drink. Tonight. I'm going to have. No more than six, that's going to be it. So, so very few people can self-identify that things are going wrong, but it, Sergeant Major talked about a battle buddy, and some people do reach that self-awareness level, like, hey, maybe, maybe I've been kind of on a bender. You know, what, what's a good resource that, that somebody can turn to uh, in addition to the chain of command that, uh, that, that they can get help, uh, whether it's emergency or whether it's more of a longer term uh, clinical focus. Well, if you're, I, I have several soldiers that have uh, self-referred uh, of late, and I think it probably has to do with just feeling bored, maybe drinking more, seeing that in themselves. Um, so Sudsy would be one. Um, there are, if you're, uh, obviously meetings, there are no meetings that are being held face-to-face -face right now, AA meetings or NA meetings, Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous, but there are a number of meetings online, that's another resource. Um, I think those are the two. But the immediate one would be through SUDCC. It's, especially if it's gonna be a self-referral, it's all confidential. Uh, command referrals are a little bit different, but. Uh, I think it's important that you mentioned that a, a self-referral is, you know, it's, it's non-attribution non or anonymous, and that's, and that's somebody having the, uh, the, the maturity and the self-awareness to say, hey, I might have a problem or I'm starting to get a problem. I need to talk to somebody to make myself a better soldier and a better person going forward. Yes. Great. How about, how about on the nutrition side? Who can I turn to besides yourself uh, to help me have a more balanced diet? Well, I've given the leadership a lot of different resources, so hopefully they'll be sending them out. They'll be including some of them in this talk. Um, but at William Beaumont, we'll, we're still doing outpatient appointments. So if you give us a call and you schedule something, our, all of our outpatient appointments are over the phone. So you can definitely still reach us. Right. But we could get on the build your plate. We could probably Google it 
mm -hmm. and, and decide, you know, I've heard just add color to your plate. Yep, just right? A brown plate, plate is not good because it means it's devoid of nutrients, right? Exactly. <laughs> so really some simple rules of thumb. All right, Big Mac with fries got nothing but brown in it, right? Add some color. Now add some color to yes, your sir. plate, okay? <laughs> and how about fitness? Where do I turn? Good question, sir. So there's definitely a lot of things out there on the internet. Some things are good, some things are bad. Um, right now I saw on Facebook that the U.S. Army Physical Fitness School has been putting out some good information. Um, Army.mil slash ACFT also has good information out there, um, as well as the PRT app. Those are the official you know, military resources. But for right now, during the COVID and being quarantined, the biggest obstacle is going to be strength. Um, and I recommend to be creative, trying to find weights um, to put on yourself under load, um, but also to keep it simple. So even a quick Google will say, you know, like how to do a squat weighted at home, do it yourself. Things are going to pop up. Um, just be smart with it. Yeah. Don't overdo it like we were talking about. But there are definite ways and products out there. So this weekend, I'm putting 10 sandbags in a Green Army duffel bag. And that is what I'm going to squat when I do heavy squats. <laughs> do you think that's going to be okay? If you've been working up to that, sir. That's yes, right. absolutely. About 40 pounds per sandbag, 10 of them, that's 400 pounds. I think you're that strong, sir. But if you did three, <laughs> no, um, I'm not putting ten in there. But I just did the math now. But, to build up, yeah. um, ideally, no. If that's your first time, so if you want to start, you know the the classic sto story is a guy going and picking up a calf every day, and the calf got bigger, so he got stronger. So start with two sandbags. Um, do that for this week with your squats, three by eights. You know, next week add three sandbags, and then go from there. This progression, and just finding, being creative at home using whatever you can for the load, manipulating your body um, for your body weight exercises, and then just being smart so we don't injure ourselves. Yeah. And I know most of our battalions have some daily competition going on, and it's a great place. You know, if, you, if you're not on your battalion or your company's social media, uh, they've got some great programs. The leadership is, is really trying to help you help yourselves out there, uh, and it's really important you know, while we are semi-isolated and left to our own advices you know it's we're, we're pushing the trust down to the individual uh, and there's a lot of resources out there for you and there's a lot of opportunities out there for you to get yourself healthier get yourself fit and have a good time doing it so thanks for joining us thanks for everybody's uh feedback and we'll see you on the next one Bo -bo. you're welcome